All right, in this video, we're going to look at one of Customs, KOWP's new features, and that is Flows. If you're familiar with Tasker, it's kind of like a version of Tasker built directly into Custom, and you can create these tasks or these flows to do certain things. And the example I'm going to show to you here, this is an image that's getting pulled randomly from Unsplash.com, the API. I'm going to go over that with you right here in a moment. But I can tap on this image and it's going to trigger a flow which is going to pull another random image from Unsplash.com. And we can do this as many times as we want. I just tapped on it again and it's going to load another image. And we're triggering a flow to do this. Now in order to do this over at Unsplash.com you will need to have a developer's account. Now right now I just have a demo set up custom right here. You're limited to 50 requests per hour. Of course, you can up that if you go into production or enterprise. And if I tap on that application custom, of course, you have some information that you'll need to read here. You can keep up with the requests that you have remaining per hour. And then obviously you're going to need your keys. And the one we'll need in custom is this access key. You can store this as a global. And speaking of, let's jump into custom. So I'm inside of globals in KOWP and we're going to have two global variables. One of them is called JSON. We're going to use the API to pull this information and it's going to be a JSON file. So we are going to do a little bit of parsing to get the information that we need. And then we need a global for key. And that's going to be that key I mentioned a moment ago. Now we have this new feature flows and we can add a flow up here in the top right hand corner. You can see I already have one opening that flow up and here's how this works. How do you want to trigger the flow? And for this particular example, we're going to do a manual and basically we're going to touch, but I'm going to show you how we actually have to apply that to the image as well. But this is going to be a manual trigger. If we go to add trigger, you can see you have other ones as well, but all we need right now is a manual. And you can see that we have two actions here. First one's a web get. To add an action, tap there. And we're going to use that web get. Inside of the web get, this is how we're going to get the random image. You can see we have this URL and then the client ID and this is where I'm putting that global variable key. And as a matter of fact, if I type that URL in, this is the JSON file that it pulls up and all we need to get here is this raw image and I, I mean you could try the full, the regular or whatever, uh, smaller file sizes for the thumb obviously, but I'm just going to pull the raw image. Of course you can get tons of other information, the description, the alternate description, whatever. But every time we trigger this flow by tapping our image, I haven't shown you that yet, it's going to reload this file essentially and we're going to get a random image every time. And that's what's cool about flow. We can tap something and we can trigger this flow and in this case it's going to do this URL again and since we are using a random here, a random image is going to get pulled every time. And then once you do that web get, we want to go and set the global variable Remember that text global variable I called JSON? You want to save that. So that's it for this flow, a real quick one. Let's apply this by checking up here in the top right hand corner. And now let's head back over to the items. We have this image and for the bitmap we have a formula. And that formula is the following. Now when we trigger this flow, we're going to name our global variable JSON and that's that JSON file, that web address that had all that information on it. And we're going to parse that JSON file dot urls dot raw and that's that spot that I showed you a moment ago of course if you want to try different sizes feel free to change that text right there so nothing too crazy there let's apply that and now if we head over to the touch for this image we had this new option right here trigger flow now to add that I'm just going to show you where you go top right hand corner we have this other touch tapping on none tapping on the none for action and there it is trigger flow of course I don't need that one here so I'm going to delete that. And now let's look underneath this trigger flow. What flow do we have? And that's the only flow that I've created. But when you name these flows, you can select more options. And I didn't show you the name, but I guess it goes without mentioning. If I head back over to the flows, jump right back into here one more time, and you can see that we did name it Unsplash. So again, what's happening here? We have set a touch onto this image. That touch is going to trigger that flow. What does that flow want to do? It's going to do a web get. It's going to get that JSON file. It's going to store that JSON file as a global variable. And then for the actual image itself, underneath bitmap, we are parsing that JSON to get that image URL or that image file. 
And then when it pulls that, that is actually what's showing this image here. Saving this up, heading back to the home screen. And if I tap again, you do have to give it a few seconds to actually pull that new image. But as you can see, each time we do this, it's going to re-trigger that flow. It's going to get yet another random image. And we can do this as many times as we want, assuming we don't overdo our calls. But there you have it. One small application of flows, a new addition to KOWP. If you like what you see and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.